Toronto, home to almost 3 million people and the largest city in Canada. Urban areas like this can be very polluted, and yet the magnitude of air pollution here is vastly underestimated. In 2014, researchers at the University of Toronto looked at samples of emissions from 100,000 cars on College Street. Their results? At least one quarter of the vehicles produced 95% black carbon, or soot, 93% of carbon monoxide, and 76% of other organic substances, some of which are known carcinogens. Benzene, benzopyrene, nitrogen oxides, particulate matter 10, and particulate matter 2.5 have been found to exceed air quality limits in South Etobicoke. In 2005, facilities in Toronto released 16 million kilograms of toxic pollutants and air contaminants in total. Where though in Toronto is at the highest risk of air pollution? Researchers found in 2008 that the three most highly polluted areas, starting with the worst, are the Etobicoke slash Pearson area, North York, and downtown Toronto, although most people thought that downtown Toronto had the worst air pollution. Almost half of Toronto's air pollution is caused by motor vehicle traffic. Residential, commercial, and industrial sources produce the rest. But why should we be concerned about air pollution? Every year, 1,300 Torontonians die, and 3,550 are hospitalized because of air pollution. Particulate matter and ground-level ozone have been linked to eye, nose, and throat irritation, shortness of breath, aggravation of respiratory conditions and allergies, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and increased risk of cardiovascular disease. High levels of carbon monoxide are also detrimental to human health, reducing the blood's ability to carry oxygen. Carbon monoxide can exacerbate respiratory and cardiovascular diseases, as well as impair exercise capability, visual perception, manual dexterity, learning functions, and the ability to perform complex tasks. Air pollution is also associated with cancer and diabetes. Our children and seniors are especially sensitive to air pollution. People participating in sports or working outside are also at risk. Air pollution-related issues cost Torontonians $150 million in healthcare costs per year. Pollution also reduces work attendance and worker productivity, costing the economy an additional $128 million per year. Increased ground-level ozone reduces the growth of crops and other plants, causing economic losses in agriculture and forestry. Finally, adverse air quality can accelerate the discoloration, fading, or tarnishing of materials, requiring that they be replaced more often. Our air quality also has adverse effects on the environment. Ozone injures vegetation and can contribute to forest decline. Fine particulate matter can also reduce the growth of and damage plants. Nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide can increase the corrosion of materials and are the main causes of acid rain, which affects water, soil, and wildlife. Fortunately, there are many organizations in Toronto fighting against air pollution. One of them is the Toronto Environmental Alliance. Volunteers in their Initiative for Healthy Air and Local Economies Project, or INHALE, collect real-time air quality data in Toronto and Hamilton. This can be used to find out the places with the best and worst air quality, as well as the main sources of air pollution, helping to develop neighborhood solutions that will improve air quality. The Toronto Environmental Alliance also partners on air quality research at academic institutions and advocates at City Hall. Another organization is the Toronto Atmospheric Fund. Some of their projects include Transform TO, which aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions while also considering other issues such as supporting the local economy and improving the public health system. Another one of their projects, Cheerio, the Collaboration on Home Energy Efficiency Retrofits in Ontario works on a local level to help conserve energy within homes and reduce costs. Finally, the Clean Air Partnership is also fighting air pollution. One of their projects is 2020 The Way to Clean Air, a campaign to decrease energy consumption at home and on the road by 20%. 
Clean Air Partnership also organizes the Clean Air Council, a network of 27 municipalities and health units from across the Greater Toronto, Hamilton and Southern Ontario areas working to develop plans to reduce air pollution. These organizations have certainly had an impact on the reduction of air pollution in Toronto. So what can you do to combat air pollution? First of all, try walking, biking, carpooling, or taking public transportation instead of using a car. Motor vehicles are the largest and most dangerous source of air pollution. When you do have to drive, make sure not to idle. Driving slower than usual can also reduce the emissions you produce. You can also conserve energy. The average Canadian uses more electricity than anyone else in the world. Not only will the air and environment be cleaner, but you'll also save money on bills. Simply being more environmentally aware, as well as spreading the knowledge, is also important. Introducing anti-idling programs, encouraging the use of public transportation, decreasing the use of fossil fuels for energy, and monitoring air quality are all things that both the government and non-government organizations can do to reduce air pollution. for improving air quality, reduce our energy use, so it's using less pollutants um, from like coal, coal uh, fuel using. Don't drive. Carpool. Minimize pollution. I don't know. Uh, improve the environment a little better by adding like trees and parks and nature to our city. Carpool and bike to school. Toronto, home to 3 million people and the largest city in Canada. The air quality here is far from perfect, but if we work together and take action against air pollution, we can make sure that everyone in our city has fresh air to breathe.